Today, you're going to become a master at the message box in Excel. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this series, VBA for Beginners, I take you step by step over fundamental aspects of VBA to make you an expert in all aspects of VBA. And today, we're focusing on the message box and all the options that come with this really great feature. So let's get right into it. Okay, the first thing we have here inside a message box, let's go ahead and create a sample message box and then we'll go over some of the parameters of a message box. So we're gonna go into the developers, Visual Basic here, Inside that, we already have a module. All you need to do if you want to create a new module is just insert a module, but we have one. So we're going to create a subroutine that is just a basic message box. So we're going to go in, we'll create a sub, we'll just call it basic message box. And make sure you stick with us because I've got a really cool treat and a download for this with lots of options. Okay, so message box is standard. We'll type in message box and we'll just type in this is a standard message box box okay that's it that's all we really need to do to get our first message box we're going to run this using f5 or display here and what that's going to do is going to create this as the standard message box we have a title and an okay button and that's sufficient but we can actually go beyond that in a message box we have multiple parameters we can customize the buttons we can add icons we can add a title so let's take a look at some of those parameters now so we're going to go into this and here's the syntax of a message box the first is the prompt and that's the message that you want to share with your user the next is the buttons what buttons do you have yes no cancel or whatever then we have the title of the message box and then we have the help file or context and generally the help file context is not used but if you had it so the help file and the context would go together but generally we're using these three the prompt we use the buttons and the title so we have a description here of what we're going to use so let's take a look now the title is the third one and the buttons is the second one so if you only want a title all you would have to do is use a comma okay so it's now looking for that button but we're going to skip that because okay is the default and that's sufficient the next is the title we'll just put in this is the title and now all we need to do is run it here and we see that we have a custom title and this is a standards message box so relatively simple on that great but what if we do want to customize some of those buttons how do we do that well again we can go back here and we can do vb okay we have several options here we have okay cancel we have okay only question and so on and so forth now i've listed all of those options here under the buttons so we have a nice list of all the buttons that you could use right here so let's take a look at some of those that we might have so we'll do let's type in vb okay so as you type it in especially if you type in the space or the comma you're going to get that context so that context is going to help us in the intellisense so we're going to do just vb as we type it in it'll show up okay cancel we'll do okay cancel okay and then we can also stick with our title so this is a title okay great so now when we go ahead and run that using f5 of the play button here we see that we now have two buttons this is the standard message box okay and cancel with the default being in that blue so we see here it's got that blue border around it and that means that if we hit enter it is automatically going to be on that blue okay so we can set the default as well okay next up how do we set an exclamation so we can also add to this remember that we have four different types we have a button we can add all four types to a single message box we have an icon here we have which buttons default and then we have a model which we don't use too much but we can okay so to add multiple types inside a message box we can do something like this all we would need to do is add a plus here and now we have the options again so here we can do maybe we want an icon so vb critical or vb application so critical is going to add that icon when we run this we see now that it does have that critical icon and that can be customized we have four different icons we have critical question exclamation and information here so we can add those custom icons to our message box along with the button okay we can also set a default right so maybe we want okay or cancel so let's try something a little bit different here okay we'll clear this out and we'll say do you want to delete this employee okay so we have our question here we're going to set our buttons to vb yes and no 
And then what we're going to set is we're going to add information. We can do VB information. So that's going to be our icon. And we're going to add another one. I want to set the default VB. And we want the default to be on yes, which is the first option. So the default button would be button number one. Then we can also, again, add a title here. So we can say delete employee. Okay, very good. So now this message box here is going to do just that. When we run it, we see that we have, do you want to delete this employee or title? And the default is on the yes button. If we were to change it to default no, which would be button two, it's the second button, and run it, we see now that the default, that blue border around the no, is automatically set. So when we hit enter, the answer is no. Okay, great. So now we see how we can use a combination of button options, we have the combination of the icon along with the default. So we can do that along with the title. So it's very, very helpful. But now what we want to do is we want to maybe to capture that, right? We want to capture the response from the user. And there's more than one way to do that. So let's start out with the most basic. We can do something, just wrap it around if, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to add the parentheses here. So we're going to add those because that keeps everything together because we need to extract the response. So adding the parentheses is going to allow us to do that, equals, and you see as soon as we say equals, we have the potential responses. So if it is VB yes, then we can do something, another message box, that message box yes was clicked, else message box no was clicked. Okay, great. So now we run that. We also get our default button. So we're going to run that, and oops, let's fix that. Okay, and when we run it, we will see that we have our default set on no. We have our, let's bring this up here. We have our, do you want to delete this employee? Yes or no. If we click yes, then we see the message box, yes was clicked. Okay, great. If we were to run it again and no, and then we see no was clicked. Okay, so that's just the way we want it, right? So we see that we can now extract it. There's actually another way to extract it. And we can put that into a variable. So we can create a variable based on the response. So we would look something like this, dim response as VB message box result. So the message box result is what we want. Now what we can do instead of this, we can set the response is equal to the message box. So now what we can do is we can remove this. So it's just a simple statement, okay? So now what we can do is we can add the response using if the response equals. Now, as soon as I put equals, you see the options under it. Because we've defined this dimension as a message box result, the only options are abort, yes, or no. So we can capture the response inside a variable using the VB message box result. So if the response equals yes, we need to then, then we would do this. So that's how we can actually capture the response directly inside. So when we run that here, we see, do you want to delete this employee? And then no. So that, that works out quite well. So we can capture that inside a variable. Message boxes can also be used to display variable information or variables when they're wrapped. And let me show you how they would do that, especially in a string. So what we can do is we can dimension employee name as a string. And we'll set that employee name. So employee name equals Fred Fredders. He's got to make his appearance, of course, in every video. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put Fred Fredder's name inside the message box or whatever employee name it is. So do you want to delete? We're going to change this. So now what we want to do is and we'll put in that employee name, employee name. Okay, very good. So now when we run that, we can see that is do you want to delete Fred Fredder? So we see that the message box in combination with strings can show up variable information, which can be very helpful. All right, very good. So we see that's a really basic and rundown. So just to summarize, we've got a, every message box, it's gonna be required that they have a prompt. The buttons are optional. We've seen many buttons. We have OK Cancel. We have several buttons here. We also have a title, which is optional. We have help file and context file, which we don't use too much. So we can also use a combination of the button details. So we can use a combination, one of each. We can use one button of combination. We can use one critical or question or icon. 
we can use one default button, which is that default button up to four. And we also have application model. Now application model, we have application response required before continuing. So we can also add that on. So let's take a look at that. If we want to add that again, we would just put a plus right here at the end plus, and then we would do VB application here model. And what that's going to do is we can see here, we're going to run it and that's going to ensure that it gets responded there's nothing we can do until we actually say yes or no we have an answer for that so we see that there's several we have system model that means you can't do anything on the system before it's answered we can add a help button to the message box so we can do different things we can do up to six different things on that so we can also right align it sometimes we want the text right aligned so we can do those things just remember adding that plus is going to give us those options so we can add a combination of those things along with our button sets the information icon the setting of the default button and adding some additional information as to what we want to do with that message box very cool all right in this template here i've created over 20 different samples of message box and you can download this template absolutely free once you do download a template any template of mine that means you're going to get those trainings free each and every week sent to you in fact twice a week on each tuesday i create incredible applications and show you step by step how i do that and also the weekends i create these really cool vba for beginners videos they're short they're sweet and they're right to the point where i make you incredible with excel so that you can use your skills to make a lot of money and also do freelance work and create your own applications if you do like these trainings go ahead and click the subscription button below don't forget the notification icon bell that'll ensure that you get alerted when i bring you these new trainings twice a week now also if you want to become incredible with vba whether you're just beginning or an accomplished developer i've got an incredible brand new product called the ultimate developers library it has over 500 macros in it and it's going to help you not only create and learn macros better but actually develop your applications much faster if you want to create your code you simply just need to copy this and paste it inside your vba library you can also do a search for that if you want there's a quick search just type in color or anything else you want to learn about search you can search by file extension or something like that even better we have something called auto hotkey shortcut and that means that you're going to be able to automate your vba just like this so let's say i want i want to use this macro quite often in my code all i would do is just need to create a shortcut like this search and then we could just do search f right maybe we want that's our shortcut we just save our code all we need to do is then go into the vba and just type in search f and automatically it types out it's remembered even if you make any updates in your code those updates are automatically going to be saved so let's say we decide we're going to make an update make an update here saving that code is automatically going to save it so let's clear that out and type it in one more time let's get rid of the end sub and type it in one more time and we see that it now includes that update so it's very very cool i hope you'll pick that up i'll include the link down below that's the ultimate developers vba library there's a description for every single macro 500 macros is actually just the beginning you're going to be able to update this application simply click here check for application updates or new macros updated macros and those macros are going to automatically be imported so i'll be making those regular macro updates every so often and that means your macro library will grow as time goes by very very cool Cool. I'm happy to bring this to you. Thank you so much for your continued support. And we'll see you right here on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Can't wait. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next time.